Hi everyone. So this is another video on how to use your Casio FX CG50. In this one, I'm going to be using the Corbett Maths booklet um, called Equation of a Line. And we're going to use it in a slightly different way as to what we've been using it for most of the other ones, which is generally solving equations. So if I turn my calculator on, I've got the screen that I had up there for my last video, which was on solving equations, fractional advanced. And what I want this time is in the menu option, I want to go to graph, which is five. So I'm going to use this to help me answer these questions. Firstly, question number one, a line has equation y equals three x plus four, write down the gradient of the line, write down the y-intercept of the line. Now we know y equals three x plus four is in the form y equals mx plus c, I want to show you how to use this calculator to check a student's answers to those. So in the graph function, I'm going to enter against y1, which is the first graph that I'm going to put in. I'm going to enter 3x plus 4. Execute, and then I'm going to tell it to draw. So here we go. If I just use my cursor to move around, I can read from the graph that it crosses the y-axis, the y-intercept is 4. On G-Solve, I can also go to y-intercept and it shows me here 0, 4. Okay, if I press execute, it stores those coordinates on the screen there for me. So my answer for the y-intercept of the line is 4. The next thing it wants is the gradient. So I'm just going to check my settings for this one because what you want for this is you want to make sure that the derivative is on, okay? So if I go back to draw and I go back to G-solve, Y-intercept, execute as I had before, there we go, it hasn't changed any of that. But what I'm going to do now is I want to find the gradient of that line. So on menu, I can do it this way. There are a few different ways. If I show you first table, in table, I'm going to set a table for this. Say I want the values from 0 to 4 going in steps of 1. I'm quite happy with that. See my table. Now I have a third column which I didn't have before. Here are my x values. So when x is 0, y is 4. When x is 1, y is 7. When x is 2, y is 10. This column here is the gradient, the derivative. That's why it's y dashed, because that's what you might see if you're doing A level and you're finding the derivative of things. So this is telling me the gradient at each of those points. So clearly the gradient is 3 and that aligns with y being equal to 3x plus 4. Question number two is slightly different. This wants us to work out the equation of the line. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to do it in the traditional manner. y equals mx plus c. The first thing I'm going to do is calculate the gradient of my line. Two units across, four units up. So m equals 4 over 2, which is 2. So I now know y equals 2x and my y-intercept there, my c value is 1 plus 1 write down the equation of my line on the answer line. But what I can do then is if I go menu five, back to graph, I go down and I'm going to plot the line y equals two x plus one, two x plus one. And I'm gonna draw that. Ah, I've got two lines on here. So let's just go back. They are both selected at present. I don't want to draw that first one, but I also don't want to delete it. I might want it again later. So if I press select here, the equal sign is no longer highlighted. Now, if I draw, I only see the one graph. There we go. Now the scale is slightly different. Does it go through one? Does it go through two, five? Yes, it does. So that is the same line as what I've drawn on here. It goes through zero, one, and it goes through two, five. If you want to check that, you can trace. There we go. If I press trace, I can scroll up and down the line. But if you want to have it more precise when it's on trace, press 2, 
that's my x value and it'll take me straight to 2 5 done what it also tells me in this option is I've got my x my y and dy by dx that is the change in y with respect to x that's the gradient at that point so I can execute to store those coordinates and I can also see if I scroll up or down the line the gradient remains the same so that's another way of checking the gradient of the line if you don't want to go into table this is much quicker so let's just check the next one that would be the same as the previous one so with question four and five six here it wants us to work out the gradient of this line so to do that if i go exit back to here i'm just going to unselect that that is y equals let's check the types of graphs y equals r equals you use that in a level um parametrics you'd use in a level um and then we've got x equals, well, that's not what we've got here either. If I keep going, those are inequalities, inequalities, and I'm back to the original screen. So I can't have something where there are two variables before the equal sign. So what you would need to do in this case, just rearrange, and then you could go, I don't like the green one, it's difficult to see. So eight subtract seven x, draw that one and then what was the way we looked at just now so if I went trace if I want to find it when x equals one done it gives me a point on the line and it also tells me that the gradient is minus seven if I move up and down that line the gradient remains the same at minus seven so there we go the gradient of the line is negative seven question number eight very similar asking us for the gradient of where it crosses the x the y-axis so we've got two things in this one I'm going to rearrange once again and out of good habit I'm going to put this into the form y equals mx plus c I do prefer it that way I don't like it that way so finding the gradient of that line if I exit and select and it's negative 3x plus 15 draw that one now I'm going to zoom out using the minus button so here we go, it's difficult to see the scale on that one. So G solve, Y intercept, there we go. It's at 0, 15. The thing about G solve is that hasn't told me there what the gradient of that line is. So it crosses at 15. What I can do for that one is go trace, and then I can go one. And this tells me that at 1, 12 is my negative three, and I can scroll up the line and down the line, and it remains the same as negative three underneath for this one you would have to rearrange it in a different way so you would have say 2y equals negative 6x plus 9 and then y equals you could either have negative 6 over 2x plus 9 over 2 or the calculator would also be able to do that way so let me just show you that it can deal with that approach as well. So exit and select, and I would have a fraction, negative six plus nine, apologies, let's just go back in and put my x in, negative six plus nine over two. If I draw that, there we go. I zoomed out a bit earlier, so I'm gonna zoom in now. It wants to know whether y, the line crosses the y-axis, so I'm gonna do two things with this one here. I'm gonna to go to trace, and I'm going to go to where x is zero. So this should give me then the y-intercept and the gradient simultaneously. Execute just to store that. So the gradient of the line is negative three and where it crosses the y-axis is 4.5, which would be our nine over two. Let's just go through some other questions here. Here it gives us four different lines and it wants to know which one goes through the point to nine. So what I can do here is I can enter each of them. This one I'd have to rearrange. This one's fine as it is. And this one I would rearrange 
as well. And then I only want one at a time. So let's go for the first one. Let's draw that one. Does it go through two nines? So trace two, two, nine. Does it go through there? Hold on. Let me just come out of that. I want to be able to see a bit more. So exit was my friend there. So if I come out of that, there we go. So trace two. Does it go through two nine? Yes, that one does. And it says which lines in the question. So I can exit from there and select that one. Do my next one. Does trace this one go through two nine? No, that goes through two four. Let's go back. Does this one go through two nine? Trace two. No, that's two five. And let's do the next one. Select. Does this one go through two nine? Apologies. Does this one go through two nine? Two nine. Yes, it does good because the question asks for which lines so that's lines A and D this one here the line L passes through the points 0 7 and 3 19 and you would do this in the same way that we did it earlier on for question number two and then you do you would use the calculator to check your answer so you do it in the same way as question number two. Draw your own line segment and just use your calculator to check your answer like we did that one. Here, this wants the Y coordinate with an X coordinate of eight. So you would, um, once you've got the equation of the line, use trace for that one and put eight in. The equation of the line that you would check on your calculator once you've found it and then that's what you would do. So every time you find one of these equations of a line, you would simply use your calculator to help you plot the line and then check your answers. So that's the end of just a few um, helpful hints and tips for how to use your Casio FX CG50 to check your answers to the Corbett Maths booklet, Equation of the Line. Thank you very much.